16 is the first moment in the United States we'll get totality. I, wonder, I read a wonderful tweet last night saying, tons of pressure on the moon to deliver today. Millions are watching. Well, uh, watching is Alyssa Drake here with me. Uh, thanks for being with me. As I say, we're not that far away. I'm going to ask the, the dunder-headed question, first of all, because uh, here you have the sun, 400 times the size of the moon. So how does the moon blot it out? Well, this is uh, one of the things that we call a fantastic celestial coincidence. The fact that uh, the moon is so much closer to us than the sun means that uh, when, when the moon passes in front of the sun, it pretty much blocks out exactly the face of the sun. Um, and that's a pretty spectacular sight to see for everybody. And historically, mm. people have been always, always fascinated by this, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, since the beginning of time, people have been able to observe eclipses. Um, and uh, before we had the technology to study them, uh, or before we realised exactly how uh, the universe worked, it was a pretty frightening experience for a lot of people, especially if you only saw one in your lifetime. Um, you weren't expecting it to happen. Yes, they would have had no idea <laughs> what it actually was. Absolutely. Suddenly it goes dark and animals yeah. too are mm -hmm. confused by it. Yes, indeed. I think, uh, yes, so even, even now animals uh, get a little bit upset sometimes in, during the total solar eclipse. So they tend to think that, uh, that night time has arrived all of a sudden. So they might get a little bit excited uh, as, though, as though it's twilight and then go completely quiet at the point of the, the total eclipse. And you've eclipse. seen one yourself, haven't you, a total eclipse? I was lucky enough to see the, uh, the almost total eclipse back in 1999 from the UK. It was a little bit cloudy on that day, but it was still a pretty spectacular sight. Before I ask you the next question, as we continue to look at these live pictures, uh, bit by bit you see the sun disappearing. And this is Oregon, and it's worth saying that uh, over the course uh, next little while, uh, this scene is replicated across 14 states before it gets to South Carolina. That's, as it goes coast to coast, it's a really narrow belt, as we were hearing earlier from uh, my earlier guest, that you have to be in this uh, very small with this band of uh, 70 miles across the United States to see this moment of totality. For the rest of the people in the United States, they will just see a shadow. So state by state, that will uh, arc its way across America. Uh, Alyssa, what, what are scientists hoping to learn from something like this? So the fantastic thing about the total solar eclipse is that for um, scientists based in the US, this gives them a fantastic chance to study uh, the outer layers of the sun, the sun's atmosphere and the corona. And this is pretty much the only time that you can do that in, in such detail. So that really is uh, un, an unprecedented experience for everyone. Uh, and what are the, the questions that scientists still are looking for answers uh, about? Because uh, this is not in isolation, is it? Because all of this is linked, is relevant to, to us here on Earth and various questions like, well, like weather, for example. Exactly. So uh, it's actually studying the sun's corona, which is going to help us to understand uh, solar winds and the resultant space weather, which is when the solar wind comes and uh, hits the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, all kinds of exciting things happen to our technology here on Earth. So it does have a very tangible effect. Now. I get a switch wow. to these pictures, uh, and I heard you take a little <laughs> insert of breath as you saw, because yeah. it is, it's absolutely glorious, isn't it? Uh, these are pictures taken from an aircraft. I was saying in the introduction, uh, uh, they anticipate this is going to be the most photographed, the most watched, the most documented uh, of total solar eclipses, uh, beating the one that was in, in India and China almost a decade or so ago and we're less than a minute and you can see that uh, because it, it takes 10 minutes or so people who've uh, witnessed one firsthand it goes darker and uh, you can see as I am speaking it gets dimmer and dimmer Alyssa you explain you're the scientist you're the <laughs> expert These, well and, 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 ha and this one last for what just over a minute the the moment of totality yes i think depending on exactly where you are watching from the, it's going to be dark for a slightly different amount of time but you're looking at somewhere between one and two and a bit minutes and look at that absolutely spectacular this is really fantastic viewing for uh, people in the usa wow and there are, uh, wow, look at that. That is the moment you were talking about the corona earlier. And you yep. get these final few seconds, don't you, where you get just the edge. It's almost like a diamond ring. Yeah, yeah. This is absolutely amazing. And <laughs> so, yeah. 
Now this is from NASA's plane. Uh, I was also reading a little earlier that uh, the astronauts on the International Space Station will end up seeing this three different times. Wow. Well, they're incredibly lucky. <laughs> That's really, really nice. And what is oh. that that we're seeing? We're looking at a spectrum, it looks like. That's fantastic. Is this live data coming in from, uh, from the And they're space. back to the NASA plane with uh, people on board watching the most extraordinary pictures. Uh, and as I say, 14 states this will go across. Why, why is the duration of totality different from state to state? Um, well, that depends on your viewing angle, really. So, um, yeah, some people are, are going to be plunged into darkness for a little bit longer than others, but uh, everybody's going to come back out the other side, so we don't need to worry too much. It's worth saying, but probably a little late, that uh, it, it's slightly risky, isn't it, when you're there, sky-gazing, yes. star-watching, looking at very all Very important. How, what is the, the best way for, for people to be watching all of this? So uh, never, ever look directly at the sun. Um, and if you're lucky enough to be observing this, the best thing to do really is to try and uh, project the image through a pinhole camera or to use your special solar eclipse glasses, which have been handed out. Oh, there it is. Lovely. Well, those are the first pictures of the ground, hence the wobble that you were just seeing. These are the ah. pictures from the ground of this total solar eclipse. Uh, Alyssa, do stay with me and continue to, uh, to look at these pictures and sit there in awe. But uh, <laughs> Bob Bear is uh, waiting to speak to us uh, in Illinois. And uh, he, of course, is uh, an expert who has seen this, I think, uh, several times over before. He's chair of the Eclipse Committee at Southern Illinois University. Bob, thank welcome to the program. Uh, I gather Carbondale, which is quite close to... Now, I interrupt myself because that is uh, what they describe as the, the diamond ring moment, as uh, it absolutely blasts around. Uh, Bob, I'll come to you in a second, but Alyssa, you wanted to get in there. Oh, I'm sorry. I got very excited about the diamond ring. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. Is that coming from Oregon now? It is. Right. Uh, and these are uh, pictures from on the ground that uh, the telescopes that are uh, pointed in that direction are giving us. Uh, Bob Bear, apologies, I, I interrupted you. Carbondale, uh, it's been called the Eclipse Crossroads of America. Tell me a little more about why. Why is this the Eclipse Crossroads of America? We are going to see two eclipses, the one today and one April 8th, 2024. And the, the uh, intersection of the center lines of the path of totality is actually just six miles south of where I'm sitting today at Saluki Stadium in Carbondale, Illinois. So you get two bites of the cherry, you lucky thing. I mean, uh, you've seen this before, haven't you? Give me an idea of how people react when they see this total solar eclipse. Well, I, I saw my first total solar eclipse last year in Indonesia with a group of about 50 to 100 people. And I was doing research so, but once I got my research going, I was excited to see it myself. And people cheer. Some people get emotional. I think a lot of people are in shock. They don't quite understand what to think of the corona up in the sky. So seeing this here today, I want to see all these additional reactions that we're getting from SAU Carbondale. Part of the project uh, that you run involves scientists, students, volunteers, all banding together to, to track eclipses. Uh, how does that help? Does that give you extra data? How does that all work? So yeah, the Citizen Kate experiment, I'm a co-investigator for it, an Illinois State Coordinator, and we have 68 volunteer teams across the country all taking data. We have one down on the field of the stadium right now that's doing final calibrations on their scope, and it's kind of a relay race across the country. They start in Oregon, and they get totality data. They hand off to the next team, we have teams every roughly 40 miles across the country, and we look to get continuous coverage of the eclipse coast to coast and get those images of the inner corona, those images that we can only get from the ground during a total solar eclipse. It's just staggering watching these pictures, uh, and I'm sure you're seeing it uh, as we speak uh, just now. Do you ever get tired of seeing something like this? 
I don't, but I actually, I can't see exactly what you're seeing. What I'm seeing is the the crowds filling in in our stadium. We just had first contact here ourselves in Carbondale and the crowds are starting to fill in. We have a sellout here, 14,000 people to watch this. Um, But no, I will never get tired of watching a total solar eclipse or looking at images of it.